So let's have a lesson on this courant by Bach. Um, this comes from BWV 996, and I have an edition of the entire suite, um, so that's available. There's a link for that under the video, but you probably have other editions of this, so just watch the video for free and pick up the tips. Um, I've been going through all the movements one at a time. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about this courant and um, some about the stylistic things, um, some of the difficulties of it, and also I'll do a walkthrough of this piece. I don't always do a walkthrough of these Bach movements at the advanced level because um, you need to work your way up. Like, you need to be ready for this piece. It's quite difficult, it's quite advanced, so um, doing a walkthrough is, is sometimes silly, but this one has so many pe peculiar fingerings and tricky sections that I think I will do a walkthrough. So first thing you might want to know is that um, there's two different types of courant. Um, there's a French style and there's an Italian style, and Bach is using the French style here. And all that means is that it's a little bit different of a dance. In this particular case, the actual pulse, the beat itself, is quite slow, but the figuration is quite, um, quite fast. Um, as opposed to the Italian courant, which is um, quite a you know quite a bit faster of a, of a pulse, and it's usually like running sixteenths and, and running lines and things like that. In this particular case, we have three two times, so the half note is the count, 
and um, there's quite a bit of figuration within each beat, so it, it makes it quite a difficult movement. So this movement is very tricky on the guitar, which is kind of strange because at first it seems quite sparse, but as you start playing it, you realize that the figuration and all the voicing and everything like that is quite difficult. It's a lot of different movements, a lot of little tiny um, ornaments, the little tiny fast movements, uh, making it quite difficult on the guitar. So uh, we'll be talking about that. The last thing I'll talk about before we do a walkthrough as well is that the there is a, there is some um, back and forth between what Pulse uh, Bach is using. In the second half, he really kind of creates the feeling of 6-4 of, of times. So we'll be talking about that a little bit. It's brief and it's subtle. And to some extent, the music brings it out with his ornamentation and the way he's written it. But um, it's worth mentioning, at least, so that you're aware of it. So before we do a walkthrough, let's just talk about the pulse and then we'll, we'll get into it, into the piece. So we need to be thinking of the pulse in terms of half notes. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So you can feel like the pulse is quite slow and yet there's all this activity happening. Um, and I think for me personally, one of the biggest difficulties of this piece is trying to get the horizontal lines to come out despite all of the new chord shapes you have to do on the guitar. It's, it, it can be uh, quite distracting to the horizontal lines when there's so much activity and so many chords to play. So be aware of that, and every once in a while, just stop and play some of the, the bass lines from the piece and um, some of the, the treble lines and play them on their own. Be aware of that and make sure you're, you're treating that as a study subject. Okay, let's do a walkthrough of the piece. So for, the, for most of the first half, um, you really do just feel the half note pulse in three. Pretty straightforward. I would recommend that you learn to either count out loud or, or just feel the beat. So, here, 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 here. Because you'll have to go so slow at first, it'll be tempting to feel just the quarter note, but I think that's a mistake. You, you wanna make sure that you're expanding the pulse, so you're keeping the pulse slow, but the figuration high. This opening phrase, you could do it with a different finger if you're not comfortable, but it's probably a good opportunity for you to, to learn to do good 4-3 mordens. You know, getting used to, do, to doing that, um, improving your 3-4 slurs. Now here, I do this weird stretch between 4-3 and then I grab the C with the second finger. Um, for many of you that might be uncomfortable. Um, this is an advanced piece though, so I, you, I, some of you will be able to do it for sure. So I do that because technically that third finger is a voice that you want to hold through all of that and then move down to the F sharp. So that's why I do that freaky fingering there. If you can't do it, um, you may have to let go of the third finger um, in order to reach. So be it, but if you can hold on to it, that's what the voicing is demanding. Third, fi third finger. Then the F sharp. This is pretty straightforward here. You don't have to do an ornament there, but keep your fourth finger down when you do this ornament. It's really tempting to lift it, but you got to sustain it all the way into the E that comes afterwards. Keep your first and third finger down until you there. Sadly, if you want to do that ornament, that mordant there, you'll have to cut off the inner voice C. So be it. So uh, 
the mixing with the open string ornaments, I mean, it's a tough piece, so I don't always like to mix cross string ornaments with closed ones, but it, it kind of works there anyway. Um, tightens up the second ornament, right? Actually, make sure that I barre the. Uh, it says barre six strings, but really, like because of this reach, I'm just grabbing the bottom three strings with my finger there. That way, I can play that F sharp immediately afterwards. There, I'm doing a hinge bar because I want to do a cross string trill. All these cross string trills, by the way, I'm doing um, I'm doing P A M I P P A M I P. That way, it's kind of like a, a tremolo pattern almost, right? And I try my best to mute the top string afterwards to clean it up when possible. It's a tricky one though, with the, along with the hinge bar. I wish there was a better fingering for that last bar. But it, there isn't. <laughs> I couldn't find a good one. So, um, fairly... Uh, I mean, in, in some ways it's not so bad, but there's just a lot to pay attention to within the individual beats. Second half is quite a bit more difficult, so let's cover that. This is quite a big leap down. I didn't even try to do the stretch. Um, if you have really long fingers, maybe you can do that, but just make sure you sustain that first chord as long as possible. Try to remember to keep your third finger down here. Even during that trill, I sometimes forget to do that, but the voice leading does demand it. This is all pretty straightforward, but the, the thing to pay attention to in the second half is that Bach has kind of changed the timing here to 6-4. Or, yeah, so, so it would be here. starts to blend back into the 3-2. So um, he places that ornament right in the middle of the bar there on the fourth beat if you're counting in 6-4. So to some extent you don't have to think about it too much. Um, it's, it's kind of written into the music. If you do that ornament and you land there with some confidence, um, the, the pseudo time signature change um, will be intact and will come out. But if you're unaware of it, um, and you're trying to continue to do the 3-2 pulse, um, it, you're going to be fighting what Bach has written, so you do want to be aware of that, and then just like back away from the 3-2 pulse and embrace where those ornaments occur uh, to bring out the 6-4. It's, it's a little bit freaky um, to think about, especially when you first start out, because you're, you have to go slow when you start out, but the beats are so long. So um, all I can say is... Uh, Try to use a metronome, keep steady, and um, let that time signature come out naturally. Okay. Where should we go from? We'll start from bar 13. So still in that 6-4 time. Still 6-4. brings back this um, cadential moment which brings us back into 3 2 here and then we're back with very 
strong sense of three. So I'm just going to go back to 15. Or I'll go back to 13, actually. So here. Let's go over bar 18. It's a very tricky um, section. Bar 18 and 19 are by far the trickiest parts in the piece and also just almost a part in the piece that makes you rethink playing the whole piece. My advice is to, you can ease up a little bit when you're playing if you're trying to get a fast tempo, but there's going to be some stretches involved. If you're more on the advanced level, you're going to really want to observe the stretches as much as possible, but even at the advanced level, there's a few places where you have to let go of notes, and um, it's just the way it is. So bar 18, my solution is to... is to reach out the third finger, because that top note and bottom note kind of want to ring, right? But I let go of it a little... I let go of the top note a little bit early in order to continue the inner voice. It's not that bad when I play it slowly, but when you get it up to speed, it can be tr quite tricky. Bar 19, uh, lots of choices here. This is one of the parts where it's really hard to hear the bass line as a horizontal thing because there's so much vertical activity in the left hand. So I've decided to go like this. Uh, I have to let go of that bass note. I can't, I could try to, if, you can try to do the stretch if you want, but. To some extent though, the bass resonance will continue through other strings. Now I do four, three here, but feel free to, if you want more security, Use two and just slide it back down. It'll be much more secure. Just a little bit more, um, if you're going fast, it's a little bit more activity with that, you know, yet another shift, right? Grabbing the next chords and securely is the most important thing. I let go there too. You, I fingered it so you wouldn't have to, <laughs> but it's, um, it's pretty jerky. Then you grab the next chord, pivot out of your chord there, but don't let go of the bass note until there. When you're practicing it, just go from one beat to the next really like, or if you're holding the notes. It's pretty tricky. And then the next one. Next one. Not much else I can I can suggest there. It's um, pretty tricky when you're playing the piece, though. Um, it's like it's almost luck of the draw. Focus on the upper voice though, you know, the, the listener will really be drawn just to that upper voice. So if you can just play that cleanly and, and nail that, I think you can get through the section, even if you're buzzing a little bit and, and hitting some, some questionable things, um, you can keep it um, contained to some extent. It's only one bar long, so don't let it ruin your experience. Um, if you want, you can re remove the inner voice, uh, which would make it uh, quite a bit easier. I didn't do that though, just because it, it sounded a little thin compared to the rest of the work. Okay, carrying on from bar 20. So I like this rising figure through here. It's a 
short work and um, all this stuff you can overcome but I will say it, it did it took me a long time to kind of really figure out what all the shapes were because there's so many changing shapes that it's just going to take you a long time you have to be familiar with every single bar of the entire piece if you want to actually play it at any kind of reasonable tempo um, so you have to give it lots of time you have to know it really well and then um, yeah pick whatever tempo you want but remember that the French courant can go quite slow the tempo can be very slow as long as the figuration is clean um, it can be quite uh, quite a bit on the slower side it's always going to feel fast in the left hand because there's just so much activity but in terms of the overall pulse don't you don't have to push it too much